we've spent a lot of time so far talking about young people. Um, now I think it's time that we actually hear from young people and their own experiences of these issues. So we're very lucky. We have two members of the Scottish Youth Parliament, uh, Sakshi Orchison and CJ Quigley, uh, who are respectively uh, elected members for the Western Isles and for LGBT youth in Scotland. Uh, they're going to co-present, um, so I'm really delighted to hand over for them now. Very, you're very welcome and thanks for agreeing to take part. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for introducing us. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sakshi and I represent the Western Isles as a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament. I'm joined today by a CJ representing LGBT Youth Scotland. We are both members of the Scottish Equalities and Human Rights Committee. I would like to thank you all for being here with us today. Before we respond to the question, I'd like to tell you a little bit about SYP. SYP has a unique democratic mandate to represent the views of young people aged 12 to 25 across Scotland from a variety of backgrounds and communities. We have over 160 MSYPs who are elected every two years to represent every Scottish constituency and 11 national voluntary organisations. Um, we are a youth-led organisation. Our board is made up of young people our conveners group is made up of young people and our working groups are all made up of young people and this makes us truly unique. We are a fundamentally rights based charity and our mission, vision and values are grounded in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Child, UNCRC. In particular, our purpose embodies Article 12, that young people have the right to express their views freely and have their opinions listened to in all matters affecting them. Ultimately, SYP exists to provide a national platform for young people to discuss the issues that are important to them and campaign to affect the change they wish to see. We do this in many different ways by consulting our constituents, debating and creating policy and leading local and national campaigns. During our response today, we will draw on some of this policy, although as we only have a few minutes, we don't have a huge amount of time to get into a lot of detail. I would encourage everyone to look at SYP's website to find out more about our work. We have been asked to talk about young people's resilience and what can be done to support young people to become more resilient. I think it's important when we are talking about this that we need to be conscious of the current situation young people and everyone are living in. We know this year has had a huge impact on young people in all areas of their lives. In April, SYP partnered with Youth Link Scotland and Young Scott to deliver Lockdown Lowdown. This is a survey of young people across Scotland on their concerns about COVID-19. Almost 2,500 young people responded to the first survey and in its findings identified what should be prioritised by decision makers to protect our futures. 42 of the respondents said that they moderately to extremely concerned about schools, colleges and university closures and almost half were stressed about exams and coursework. Nearly two thirds are concerned about the impact of coronavirus on our futures. With the worries about education, jobs and money, it comes as no surprise that young people feel overwhelmed. Almost 40% of the respondents said that they are concerned about their mental health well-being, and a quarter are worried about their physical health. We are even more worried about making sure our families and friends are safe and well. Nearly half of us are concerned about mental health of others and two fifths are concerned about others' physical health. Almost a third are moderately or somewhat concerned about their ability to look out for or care for others too. SYP is using the results of lockdown lowdown to inform our policy work. One of the ways we've used this is in creation of our new youth manifesto from Scotland Young People, which launched last week. Again, we don't have much time to give you a lot of details, but you can find this document on our website or on our social media channels. Mental health and well-being features heavily in our manifesto calls. In particular, we are calling for more investment in college and university welfare services and for mandatory, tra mandatory training for those working in education and health care settings on how to identify mental health problems. These are two ways in which we feel young, young people can be supported to become more resilient. The final pieces of SYP policy I would like to refer uh, you to are our members' motions. These policy statements are submitted uh, to our national sittings and are debated and voted on by our full membership. In July, we recognise the, the huge impact uh, COVID-19 and as a result, we created policy 
policy specifically relating to young people's experience through the pandemic. Through these motions, we acknowledge the impact of the pandemic on the mental health and well-being of young people in rural com communities and the importance of prioritising young people's mental and physical well-being as Scotland begins to recover from the pandemic. We are starting to see changes to the support available to us. For example, the Scottish Government, the Scottish Government recently announced a funding package of £50 million to respond to children and young people's mental health problems brought about by the pandemic. Mental health and wellbeing is a huge concern to Scotland's young people. Mental health problems have been previous have previously been described by SYP as our generation's epidemic. However, throughout this year, we have also seen countless examples of young people coming together to support each other and their communities, volunteering with local food banks, using social media to share positive messages, and taking time to check in with friends and family. Young people are struggling, but slowly and surely, by listening to Scotland's young people and by meaningfully involving us in their decisions that affect our lives, we hope that we will start to see that, really, we are more resilient than we may think. Thank you.